It's Luca here. So welcome to the part three of our three-part series for the Canadian Pocket Micro Filter. This is the final part, and this video is going to be specifically on cleaning and the best method for long-term storage of a Canadian Pocket Filter. The first thing I want to bring to your attention is when I finished using the Micro Filter, I took the caps for the output and the input, and I labeled them. I for input and O for output. Reason being is because you don't want to get those calves cross contaminated down the line. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want my untreated water source cross contaminated with my treated water source. So that's just my little tidbit to you. I just recommend writing the O for output or the I for input for your caps. Now, as you can already see in front of you, I have a bowl. What's in that bowl right now is just about 90% complete with uh, warm tap water. And all I did was I took one cap full of this Clorox bleach and I just dumped it in there. Swished it around a little bit and now I have my water bleach solution. This is what I recommend you do to help filter out any type of bacteria or algae growth that may have snuck through in there somewhere and uh, it's not going to really kill your filter and it's just going to help keep everything a little more sanitized so go ahead and uh, with your input and your output connected put the input in and then all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pump out a little bit and then once I'm finished pumping out a little bit we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to open the cat pocket filter and we're going to take a look at our uh, ceramic element and we're going to clean that up a little bit. Now once you've gone ahead and you've pumped out about 15 pumps, go ahead and remove your input and then go ahead and just kind of chase out the rest of the water that's remaining. If your cat on filter is looking like this, where it still has air in it, that's not a problem. If you made our last video, all we need to do is really unscrew the top and it's going to release the pressure of the air that's stored inside the filter. So go ahead and remove the top and then go ahead and remove the base of the cat and pocket filter as well. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at our ceramic element. Now if you notice here, there's not very much sediment on it. And that's pretty much because the uh, untreated water source I used, I made sure to try to stay away as much as possible from the sediment. This is only going to help prolong the usefulness of your filter. So like I recommended in the last video, try to stay away from sediment as much as possible. Now the first thing we're going to want to do with this ceramic element is we want to take that scrubbing pad that came with our Canine pocket filter. You should have two. You're going to go ahead and you're going to start up a little lukewarm water. Once it's gotten about warm, go ahead and just stick your filter, the element, under the water. And what you're going to do is you're just going to take the pad and you're just going to lightly scrape down. And you're going to keep rotating and scrubbing, rotating and scrubbing. No soap, no bleach, just water in the pad. Then what you're going to do is just go ahead and you're going to inspect your ceramic element just to make sure you don't see any type of cracks or anything like that. And obviously, of course, make sure you've gotten out big pieces of sediment from it. Now that it looks pretty clean, I'm going to go ahead and just grab the measuring gauge that came with the catadon. And you're just going to sit and see if you can fit it over the filter. If it's looking like this, and you shouldn't uh, use min, uh, maximum pressure, by the way. But if it's looking like this, then that means your filter is still good. If it looks like that, it actually goes over the filter, that means it's time to get your filter replaced. Of course, we only use this for a little bit, so there is much more life to go with this filter. But this is your little gauge to help you know when, roughly, you're going to need to replace your uh, ceramic element. 
Now that we've confirmed that our ceramic element is good to go, go ahead and just lay it on a towel and just let it start to air dry. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring back our water bleach solution. And what we're going to do is we're going to take most of the parts of the Canadian pocket filter. We're just going to let it kind of sit in there for 5-10 minutes. So I like to put the sleeve in. And I take the output hose and put that in there as well. And I'll also take the sponge or sponges that I use to clean the element with. And I'll let those sit in there as well. Now this part here is optional. This is up to you. But I also like to take the base, let it sit there for five minutes, and the rod as well, and let that sanitize there for five minutes. And that's really all we're doing. We're just making sure that we're getting this as sanitized as possible for long-term storage. Once you've let that sit there for five minutes, just take it back, set it on a towel, let it start to air dry, and then you can take your input hose and place it in there separately for five minutes, take that out and let that air dry. Now the minimum that you should let this air dry for is at least 72 hours. And that way you're just making sure everything is completely dry because you don't want any type of mold or anything growing inside. Because as soon as you're done with this, you're going to connect everything back together, you're going to put it in the bag, and you're going to let it sit there until you need it the next time. So that's why we're prepping now for our long-term storage. And also why I recommend 72 hours minimum just to make sure it's completely dry. And then of course you're just going to look it over just to ensure that it is. Now that our pocket filter is completely air dry, if you're planning on storing this for long-term storage, the important points you want to look at is first, you want to look at the O-ring of the pump rod. If it doesn't have a shine gloss like this one does, then you're going to need to use the included lubricant and lube that up. As well, on the pump rod, if it feels like you're meeting some resistance and does have a nice smooth feel, kind of like this one does, then this one is also going to need to be lubed up with the same lube. Finally, for your lube, if the threads you want to make sure you get those for the pump base and also for the top of the unit. Just apply a little bit, don't need too much. And this is going to help prolong the life of this for long term storage. Now once you use this again after your long term storage, you're going to want to pump at least 32 ounces of water before you drink it. What that's going to do is it's going to help remove some of the elements of the ceramic filter and it's also going to help remove any type of stale taste in your water. So make sure you pump at least 32 ounces, and then after that, you should be clear to go for drinking. Hopefully this video of information to you. This concludes our three-part series of the Canadian Pocket Review. If you haven't seen the first two, I'll go ahead and post that link in the description. Until then, guys, be prepared, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Later.